Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, the 28th of April, rapidly drawing to a close this month. Next week, we are into May already. We continue our exploration of the story of the Exodus, and today we're looking at Exodus uh, chapter 16, verses 10 through to 21. But I'll go back a bit because there is some exciting developments that took place in the reading yesterday, which of course I did not uh, share in a little address. I'll pick up on that today. Um, the Israelites have crossed the Red Sea. There's great rejoicing. We noted um, on Tuesday when we last spoke how as humans we tend to rejoice when things go well and then we get all grumpy and we blame somebody. Um, the people around us, whether it's your minister or the bishop, but ultimately we're blaming God when things go bad. And you see the Israelites do that. And I'm afraid that's just part of the human, human nature. It doesn't make it uh, right, simply that everyone else is doing it. It is wrong. And in fact, Paul exhorts us, is it in Corinthians, where he says, you know, we must not be like that. We must have faithful uh, a faithful response and belief in God uh, because God will provide for us. And don't, don't be grumpy when things don't go our own way. Um, and that message from Paul that God is always faithful is certainly what you see coming through. Uh, the people head off and one of the places they go to is a spring uh, which they called Mara, which means bitter. They could not drink the water. And Moses, as told by God, takes a, a, a piece of wood and he throws it into the water. And the water becomes quite palatable. And um, do they call that potable? The water is quite potable. And it is sweet, in fact, on the palate. And I can't help but think of the cross and God's provision um, in, in telling Moses to throw that piece of wood into the water and God's provision to us of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross, a just man dying for the unjust, a just man who was sinless but falsely accused. And again, um, whether the reference is to the cross, I didn't pick up anything particular in the footnotes of my Bible, but I can't help but um, think of the cross and ultimately of God's provision for us. The people move on and they become um, hungry and they begin to grumble <laughs> yet again, grumble because they're hungry. And so God says, I will provide meat for you in the evening and I'll provide bread for you in the morning. And of course, the meat is this swarm, huge swarm of quail that come and settle in and around the camp where the Israelites are. And they're a significant number of people. And the people are able to go out and capture the quail. In the morning, they wake up. There's a thick uh, dew covering the ground. And when that dries off, there are these thin flakes of, of a wafer type of, of bread, um, the manna. And again, this pointing to um, the bread of, of life, which Jesus lays claim to when he says, I am the true bread of, of life. Again, God's provision. And so we learn that God always provides for us. It might come when we are hungry and doesn't come immediately. It comes in a way that is entirely miraculous. And that's the other clue here is that I'm not convinced that Moses somehow intelligently led the people through the migration paths of quail. If, they, if quail ever does um, fly and migrate from country to country, to country. It truly was a miracle. The piece of wood going into the water may well symbolize the cross, but it is a miracle. The bread in the morning is a miracle. And God will provide for us in a way that is miraculous. We note and we can't fully explain and understand that often it, it comes quite late. But it's our faithfulness that God is looking for. God is teaching us perseverance and strength and courage and faith. Um, and, and, and so let us hold firm then in our trust that God is present and not silent, that our God is faithful and let us be faithful to him, even though it may look as if we've come to the very end of our tether and everything will go topsy-turvy. Remain faithful to our Lord. He is present. He will provide. Folks, have a wonderful day. We'll chat again tomorrow. God bless.